What's happening, people? It's the homie Smith, the 400, one half of Straight Off the Ave. Shout out to my co-host, Mr. Dubbins, and this is Mr. Reaction. Right now, man, I got something crazy, bro. So I'm scrolling, right? And I notice they got another Jaguar Wright video out there, right? And this time, she's saying that um, Jay and Bay, you know what I'm saying, tried to sacrifice Riri. Obviously, it wasn't successful if this alleged thing was finna uh, occur, you feel what I'm saying? But, um, yeah, man, Jag always wanted to, like, you know what I'm saying, say um, what people um, would deem as conspiracies and, and you know, false false narratives, and, and you know what I'm saying? But we're going to see what she talk about, man, because I'll be believing some of that if she be saying, <laughs> I ain't going to hold y'all. Yeah, you know I'm saying so. We gonna tap in. We are gonna see what she talking about. You feel me? And yeah, we gonna come in at the end. Um, and I'm gonna give y'all my reaction, man. Let's get it poppin', it's Mr. Reacts. Let's go. And that's because Jay Z worked so hard to change the narrative of that night. Now, Rihanna was only 14, 15 when he started with her and signed to the Def Jam. Jaguar Wright just spilled some piping hot tea about Beyonce and Jay-Z and seemingly accused them of trying to sacrifice Rihanna. For years now, there's been this ongoing buzz about Beyonce possibly harboring some secret jealousy toward Rihanna. And there were even rumors that Beyonce banned Jay-Z from getting anywhere close to Riri. However, it looks like this story has another, much darker side according to Jaguar Wright. Jay-Z allegedly groomed Rihanna when she was a teenager, and then later on, Jay and B reportedly tried to sabotage Riri's career and eliminate her from the spotlight. Luckily, Rihanna caught on to their alleged evil plan and ran for her life, distancing herself from the Carters for good. But what exactly did Jaguar reveal about these supposed sacrifices Jayza and BNC are doing? And did Rihanna really almost end up being their victim? Let's get into it. And that first night, when he had that outbreak and he busted into Clyde Davis's house and said, where the f is this dirty jack? I can't, I can't fault him to that. The ongoing saga of Beyonce and Rihanna's alleged feud is back in the spotlight. And this time, there are some fresh reports throwing shade on why Queen B might not be Riri's biggest fan. So let's rewind a bit for some context. Back in 2005, Rihanna auditioned for Jay-Z and he was so blown away that he signed her on the spot. For the next three months, Jay-Z and his team worked their magic, creating Rihanna's debut album, Music of the Sun. Now, here's where the plot thickens. Somewhere in the midst of the recording, Rihanna and Beyonce crossed paths. Rihanna spilled the tea back then, claiming that Beyonce was super sweet, even dropping some pearls of wisdom about performing live. And so has she given you any kind of advice or... or... Yeah, she actually wrote me this cute little letter and she signed it with her autograph it was so cute um when i first met her and she wrote um she was telling me just let loose when you perform and just have fun and be in control but hold on to your hats because according to the latest scoop there might be more to this story than meets the eye so here's the scoop as rihanna's star rose higher and higher rumor has it that beyonce did a 180 and started giving her the cold shoulder right after rihanna dropped music of the sun whispers started circulating that rihanna and jay-z were allegedly having an affair beyonce tight lip it on the matter chosen an interesting way to express herself. In 2006, she released her second solo album, Be Day, featuring not one, but two songs about infidelity, Resentment, and Ring the Alarm. Cue the eyebrow raises and the intense speculation that these tracks were throwing some major shade at Rihanna. Now, here's where it gets even juicier. While Jay-Z did come clean years later on his album 444 about his own infidelity, the rumors about him getting cozy with Rihanna were apparently nothing more than hot air. Rihanna's former publicist, Jonathan Hay, spilled the tea, revealing that he fabricated the entire story about Jay-Z and Rihanna getting involved. 
According to Hay, it was all a PR stunt to promote Rihanna's breakout hit, Pond de Replay. But if the rumors about Jay-Z and Rihanna were just a PR stunt, why does Beyonce still seem to be holding on to some sort of grudge against Riri? Well, rumor has it that Beyonce might be the gatekeeper of the Queen of R&B title in her mind. Yup, she's got this belief that there can only be one queen and it looks like she's not ready to share that throne with anyone. Fans have been quick to point out the curious fact that these two have never teamed up for a collaboration. And what's even more eyebrow raising is that Beyonce hasn't lifted a finger to put the feud rumors to rest. Let's fast forward to 2019 when Beyonce dropped Bow Down. Fans were all ears and many couldn't help but feel that the lyrics were throwing some major shade in Rihanna's direction along with a few other leading ladies in the music game. It's worth noting that some fans found the lyrics a tad too much, especially coming from a self-proclaimed feminist like Beyonce. I mean, here's a woman who champions empowerment, yet the lyrics seem to be painting a different picture, almost like she was demanding worship and tossing around the B word to her fellow female artists. If, if, you, if, you, have to, if you have to say bow down, then there's no need to bow down. It's like, it's like if you call yourself a diva, then you're not really a diva. There's certain things that don't need to be said. I mean, you know, a few weeks ago, she was singing at the inauguration. Then she was performing at the Super Bowl. We celebrate, you, you're on a Pepsi can, for goodness sake, to tell B words, to bow down. And then you're saying girls run the world. When Beyonce was later asked why she was telling other women to bow down to her, she said the song wasn't all that serious. And she casually mentioned that one day, she woke up with an angry chant in her head and figured, why not let it all out in the studio? The reason I put out bow down is because I woke up, I went into the studio, I had a chant in my head, it was aggressive, it was angry, it wasn't the Beyonce that wakes up every morning, it was the Beyonce that was angry, it was the Beyonce that felt the need to defend herself. And if this song never comes out, okay, I said it. And I listened to it after I finished, and I said, this is hot. I'm gonna put it out. I'm not gonna sell it. I'm gonna just put it out. People like it. Great. They don't. They don't. And I won't do it every day because that's not who I am. But wait, because here's where the plot thickens. The songwriting brother duo Theron and Timothy Thomas, also known as Our City, spilled the beans that they originally wrote Bow Down with Rihanna in mind. However, Riri gave it a pass and somehow Queen Bee snagged the track. One of the brothers even dropped the bomb that he had never crossed paths with Beyonce and was in in fact, tailoring Bow Down specifically for the one and only Rihanna. But remember when Beyonce casually mentioned waking up with the idea for Bow Down in her head? Well, it turns out that might not be the whole story. In fact, it seems like Queen Bee might have been, dare we say it, bending the truth a bit. So, not only did Beyonce take a bit of creative credit for the song, but she essentially claimed ownership of a track that was, in essence, a Rihanna reject. Imagine the surprise when you realize that the fiery anthem with its edgy lyrics and Queen Bee attitude wasn't initially meant for her. It's like finding out the origin story of a superhero costume that was originally designed for someone else. And you know who else was likely <laughs> taken aback? Rihanna herself. When Beyonce made those comments about waking up with the bow down idea, it's no wonder Riri might have felt a bit singled out or even personally called out. I mean, here's a song that was meant for her, now being sung by another musical powerhouse, and to top it off with a bit of creative embellishment in the storytelling. So shortly after Bow Down dropped, Riri tweeted, I only know how to be number one. I could use a challenge. How that feel down there on your knees, huh? Now all you original Rihanna fans probably remember the golden era when Riri was straight up savage, dragging folks left and right on Twitter like it was her daily workout routine. But here's the thing about Rihanna. She's not just a queen of clapbacks, she's also one of the most authentic celebrities out there. Every time she found herself dragged into some mess, you better believe it was only because she was defending herself. Now fast forward to the time when Vogue decided to dig into the juicy stuff and asked Rihanna to spill the tea on those persistent feud rumors with Beyonce. Rihanna, being the queen of unbothered, brushed it off with a hearty chuckle. According to her, the whole thing was just plain silly. She went on to explain that she's not the type to lose sleep over competition, 
or get tangled up in petty rivalry drama. Here's the deal. They just get so excited to feast on something that's negative, Rihanna told Vogue. Something that's competitive. Something that's, you know, a rivalry. That's just not what I wake up to, because I can only do me, and nobody else is going to be able to do that. But despite Rihanna distancing herself from the feud rumors, Beyonce's feelings toward Rihanna's success are still the talk of the town. In fact, an insider, someone in the know and close to the situation, recently stepped up to spill the tea and said it all boils down to one thing. Beyonce's insecurity. Yes, you heard it right. According to this insider, Queen Bee feels a bit shaky when faced with strong, outspoken women like Rihanna. It's like there's a threat to her own throne when confronted with ladies who fearlessly speak their minds and carve their own paths in the music industry. His insider, who's apparently in the know, spilled the beans on Beyonce's alleged track record of sabotaging other female artists. Rumor has it that she even went so far as to convince Jay-Z to leak Rihanna's eighth studio album, Anti, ahead of its scheduled release date. Why, you ask? Well, the speculation suggests that Beyonce wanted to ensure that Rihanna's album wouldn't overshadow the rollout of her track formation. But hold on to your hats because there's more to the story. Enter Uncle Ron, the man claiming to be Beyonce's former bodyguard, who's been making waves on TikTok with a series of bombshell allegations against the Carters. Uncle Ron claimed that Beyonce and Jay-Z weren't just climbing the ladder of success. They allegedly left a trail of ruined careers in their wake. He also name-dropped Carrie Hilson, suggesting that Beyonce actively sabotaged Carrie's career because she felt threatened by her. Beyonce and Jay-Z will do anything to destroy anyone who speaks out against them. Okay, I get the threats, but you have to remember one thing. I know your deepest secrets. I know so much about you and what you've done. I know so much on how you got where you are, how you stepped on the many people. Beyonce, how you guys ended Carrie Hilson's career because she said something about you. That's how hateful you guys are. How you step on anybody to stay on the top. And then Carrie herself spilled the beans in a recent interview and admitted that she was manipulated into dropping a diss track about Beyonce. And here's the twist. She claims it was all part of a grand plan orchestrated by Beyonce's team. Allegedly, the scheme was to turn the fans against Carrie, initiating a cancel culture wave for daring to utter a word against their beloved queen. It's the price you pay, you know, when, you know, when you're early in your career, you feel that you have to listen. And when you buck, they buck harder and they make threats. And those threats are huge ones. And you, you, you know what I mean? You don't, you don't feel like you have a choice. I really didn't feel like I had a choice. It was do this or this. And then Jaguar Wright joined the chat and revealed even more explosive details about Beyonce and Jay-Z's shady ways. So according to Jaguar, Jay-Z has been pulling the strings and controlling Beyonce with drugs for years. And as for Beyonce, she's so caught up in her own hype that she can't stand seeing another female singer thrive in her own lane. But that's just the tip of the iceberg, because Jaguar also made some jaw-dropping claims about the infamous 2009 incident when Chris Brown physically attacked Rihanna. And Jaguar claims that Jay-Z may have been involved in this incident. How? Well, according to Jaguar, Jay groomed Rihanna and gave her an STD, and she then passed it to Chris, leading to the infamous altercation ahead of the 2009 Grammy Awards. And while there's been a lot of speculation about Jay Jay-Z's dark side for years. It was really Cassie's lawsuit against Jay-Z's friend Diddy that opened the floodgates and encouraged multiple industry insiders to speak out against the Carters. And the whole thing is almost like a scene out of a psychic script because Jaguar Wright predicted this years ago. Now, when Jaguar first spilled the tea on Jay-Z, people dismissed her and called her crazy. But here's the twist. Her story has stayed consistent and she's doubling down, claiming that Jay-Z is even and worse than Diddy. But before we dive into Jaguar's claims, let's talk about this intriguing blind item making the rounds on social media. It involves none other than singer Teaira Marie, who, by the way, was signed by Jay-Z at the tender age of 16. Here's the backstory. Teaira, discovered by L.A. Reid, was signed to Def Jam at the same time as Rihanna. 
In his memoir, L.A. Reid spilled the beans, revealing that the label initially thought Tiara would be the bigger star. But surprise, surprise, enter Beyonce, who allegedly interfered, instructing them to shift their focus to none other than Rihanna, because at that time, she thought Tiara would be a bigger threat and she didn't believe Rihanna had the vocal skills to make it big. L.A. Reid wrote in his memoir, We had an in-house company showcase and Beyonce happened to be there with Jay-Z, Tiara Mari, Rihanna, a four-girl group called Black Butterfly, and Nayo performed. At the label, we thought Tiara Mari would be the big star. We spent more time on her, did more work on her, paid more attention to her. A bell went off for me, however, when, after the showcase, Beyonce came up to me and said, That Rihanna girl, she's a beast. Now, according to this new blind item, Beyonce decided to throw her weight behind Rihanna, not only because she thought Rihanna would flop, but also because she allegedly got wind of Jay-Z getting involved with Tiara. The blind item claims that L.A. Reid, the man who discovered Tiara, allegedly had a romantic entanglement with her right after discovering her. And get this. There's a whopping 31-year age gap between them. The blind item goes on to claim that Tiara was, in a sense, sold to Ray J, who apparently dabbled in the shady business of scouting and controlling young female artists. And word on the street is that Ray J took the reins and brought Tiara to Jay-Z's attention. Soon, she was sold to this pseudo corn star and celebrity sibling. You can also take a guess at that one. He loves controlling vulnerable women. It is his specialty. Anyway, he started controlling the career of this singer. He brought her to the attention of this a list rapper and mogul, allegedly Jay-Z. Now rewind to 2005. Shortly after turning Sweet 16, Tayira got her big break when Jay-Z signed her to Def Jam. Her debut album, Rockefeller Records presents Tayira Marie dropped in August of that year and hit the charts with a bang. It soared to number five on the Billboard 200 and secured the number two spot on the top R&B hip hop albums chart. But fast forward to 2006, the year Tiara and Ray J started dating. Quick, I ain't had no clue she was 16 back then. That's crazy. She looked grown in a month. But that don't excuse shit. Let's keep it going. And here's where it gets interesting. Despite her initial success, that same year, Jay-Z made a surprising move by dropping Tiara from his label. It's a head-scratcher because she was on a high with the success of her debut album. The plot thickens when we learn that Tiara had already started working on her second album when production suddenly hit a brick wall. And right before her high school graduation, she receives a phone call from the label dropping the bombshell that they were cutting ties with her. And to add a touch of mystery, Tiara claimed she never heard from Jay-Z again. I'm no longer on the label because, well, to be honest with you, I don't know why I'm no longer on the label. Mm. But um, I know that I just took some time off to finish school or whatnot. And then, you know, in the midst of that, I was in Detroit and um, I just got a phone call. Like, I think I was getting ready for prom or something. And they were like, you know, we, we're going to be letting you go. You're young. You have a bright future ahead of you. You know, the womp womp talk. And <laughs> um, that's how it happened. I was shocked. I was sad because Jay didn't call me himself. You know, um, Jay Brown called me. And I was, you know confused because I didn't know why. So, get this. According to Tiara, Jay-Z initially played the role of a father figure in her life, offering guidance and support. But then, out of the blue, he decided to cut ties with her, leaving her in the dark without a single explanation. Like a father figure at the time, but right now, I can't, I can't say that because, you know, I don't talk to him anymore. And he didn't even call me and tell me bye-bye, so, you know. <laughs> According to Blind Item, Jay-Z supposedly let Tiara Marie go because he was romantically involved with her and Queen Bey got wind of it. So allegedly, Jay-Z dropped Tiara just as fast as he signed her. And if that weren't enough, the blind item suggests that not only did Jay-Z part ways with Tiara, but he also went the extra mile by allegedly blacklisting her, effectively putting a career roadblock in her path. By the time all of the ink was dry, she was just shy of being legal, but that didn't stop the mogul. He liked to sample the new talent. He was sampling her on a fairly regular basis, but he was also involved with the current A-plus list singer who was in his face every day. And this could allegedly be Beyonce. 
The thing is, though, that corn star in charge of her career was feuding with the mogul and told the mogul he would not be allowed to hook up with the singer again. I assume he thought the mogul would think she was something special, apparently not as special as the current A-plus lister, because the new signee was dropped and the word was put out on the street. No record deals for her from any label. Okay, let's delve into the aftermath of Tayira's Def Jam journey. After being dropped, she found herself battling substance issues and even checked into rehab. Many speculated that this could be a consequence of being thrust into the industry at such a tender age. But hold on, because Tayira's story isn't an isolated case. Jay-Z has been accused of allegedly grooming not just her, but other young women too. There are whispers that he was involved with Foxy Brown when she was just 14. And then we also can't ignore the fact that he met Beyonce when she was 16 and he was 28. And then there's this lingering rumor that Jay-Z might have been connected to Aaliyah's tragic passing. The speculation suggests that Aaliyah rejected his advances, and, well, the rest is history. Not to mention Jay-Z's close ties with R. Kelly, despite the controversial saga involving Aaliyah. According to Aaliyah's ex, Dame Dash, even after Jay found out about Kelly's actions, he allegedly refused to cut ties with him. It already destroyed, but then years later they tried to do the tour. Um, the best is broke, the best Yeah, is but it still didn't work out. But you notice I wasn't a part of any of that, but in the car happens but the thing I didn't understand is I was like I know I'm not with that and because of the moral challenge and him choosing one way I knew morally we weren't the same girl. Dame also said in another interview that Jay-Z tried very hard to get with Aaliyah however Aaliyah simply wasn't interested in him like that allegedly Jay-Z's ego was bruised big time by Aaliyah rejecting his advances so he decided Beyonce should take Aaliyah's spot Interestingly, around this time, Jay's feud with Dame Dash reached a critical point and it all culminated in 2001, the very year when tragedy struck and Aaliyah lost her life in a plane crash in the Bahamas. Coincidence or not, that was also the year when Jay-Z and Beyonce decided to take their relationship public. And in a whirlwind of events, less than a year later, Jay-Z dropped a joint album with none other than R. Kelly, titled Best of Both Worlds. Now, fast forward to the aftermath of R. Kelly's exposure of his crimes. Allegedly, Jay-Z's PR team went into overdrive, working tirelessly to bury any traces of their friendship. However, those who were on the scene witnessing the drama unfold, like Jaguar Wright, refused to be silenced. The twists and turns in Jay-Z's journey through the early 2000s paint a vivid picture of the intricate relationships and power dynamics within the music industry. And amidst the chaos, individuals like Jaguar Wright stand as witnesses, unwilling to let the narratives be sanitized by the hands of PR machinery. Okay. He was working with R. Kelly and they were making so many records together. You know, they made all of those records together. They both f***ed Aaliyah. They shared so much in common. And then there was a falling out. And that's like it never happened. Whoever talks about best of the both worlds, best of both worlds, nobody talks about that. Nobody talks about this yet. Nobody yeah, they, talks I, about I, that they project. Swept, that nigga swept that smooth under the rug. Why? <laughs> According to Jaguar, she spilled the beans and suggested that Jay-Z was green with envy because Aaliyah chose Dame Dash over him. Now, let's put this in context. Jaguar wasn't just any onlooker. She was there in the thick of it. She was part of the background singers during Jay-Z's MTV Unplugged in 2001, the very year Aaliyah tragically passed away. And let's not forget, it's the same year Jay-Z was working on the Best of Both Worlds album with R. Kelly. So you can bet Jaguar witnessed a whole lot of behind the scenes drama and dynamics unfold. By the way, wasn't this all around the time when Aaliyah died? Yeah. And Beyonce's solo career was struggling? Damn on your horn now, that record. Mm. From the Austin Powers shit, it was some of the worst shit ever. They were having a hard time taking her solo, and then Aaliyah died. And then they brought Rich Harrison in. You know, I got me thinking some crazy right now. She liked posing with him in pictures for, for page six. Aaliyah didn't, she fell in love with Dane. And then in another recent interview, Jaguar spilled some more tea on Jay-Z and claimed that the only reason Jay is keeping a low profile these days is because he's allegedly even worse than Diddy. Sean Carter is worse. He's smarter, he's patient, he's not sloppy. This He's been lining up people he calls friends and stepping to the side while they get hit by the guillotine for 30 
years. Jaguar went on to share a troubling story about a woman she's close to, someone within the industry who, according to her, fell victim to something terrible that Jay-Z did. Jaguar also emphasized that she's been battling to bring this to light for a whopping 15 years. He pushed somebody I love too far, and you know who I'm talking about, B. We were kids. We were in our 20s. How fucking long do you expect her to have to suffer fucking the bad choice of fucking you? Yes, she's in the industry. Yes, she was put in exile. No, she wasn't perfect, but she was everything still is. Now, circling back to Rihanna and the alleged sacrifice she escaped, Jaguar also recently spilled that Jay was messing with underage Rihanna and gave her an STD. Jaguar claimed this is the reason Jay allegedly twisted the whole narrative surrounding the DV incident between Chris Brown and Rihanna. Like, people don't understand what happened that night. And that's because Jay-Z worked so hard to change the narrative of that night. Now, Rihanna was only 14, 15 when he started f***ing with her and signed her to Def Jam. It's clear to say that the herpes that she had came from the person she had been most truly involved with, and that was Sean Carter. Jay-Z gave her the herpes that she gave to Chris Brown. And that first night, when he had that outbreak and he busted into Clyde Davis's house and said, where the f*** is this dirty jet? I can't, I can't fault him to that. And now on top of all this, rumors are going around that Rihanna had to literally run for her life because she was allegedly planning to expose Jay-Z and Beyonce's grimy ways, and the Carters weren't gonna let this happen. As for fans, they're saying anything is possible when it comes to Mr. and Mrs. Carter, and they're giving Jaguar props for being brave enough to speak out out against the power couple. One fan said, I believe Riri was a victim of more than we know. Definitely manipulated, groomed if you like. I wonder why she went away from music in the end. Was she run out or did she tap out? I feel she, like many, has been through a of things. Some borderline abuse that's not easy to pinpoint as it's a mixture of manipulation and the mindset of a young carefree person. It's effed up. Down with the industry. And another person wrote, Jaguar was talking about this for years and she's never been sued. I don't know if the info is true, but considering the parties involved are very powerful in their industry, it's a bit interesting to see that nothing has ever been done to stop Jaguar's said misinformation. But what's your take on Jaguar's comments about Jay-Z and Rihanna. Do you think Rihanna really escaped the rumored sacrifice? Comment down below and don't miss out on this next video. And there we have it, man. Now, my thoughts on all of this. Um, I think it's highly possible. Um, I know for a fact that Jay-Z was around Foxy Brown. And again, I didn't know how old she was growing up, but like the fact that he has a track record of dealing with females that are uh, upcoming artists, they all around the same age, what, 14, 15, 16, very impressionable. Normally the age when like, you know, they start running away from home and, and being, you know, a little more uh, risky, you feel me? Sick. <laughs> just sick at the end of the day you know what i'm saying because it's like you know there is a track record there and then you gotta think like they said um jaguar never got sued you feel me she's still out here spilling the beans so like if she ain't never get sued you know what i'm saying you see td jakes out here striking people you feel me but yeah man that's a deep one, bro. Tierra Marie. I ain't know she was as old, you know what I'm saying, as as young as she was, but you feel me? The, that seemed to be the same case with her. And I think that might be who uh, Jag was crying about, but you know, we'll never know. But yeah, man, y'all go ahead, sound off in the comments. How y'all feel about this situation? Excuse me. How y'all feel about this situation, man? Do you think that it was a possibility that that's the reason that Ish went left up in that car that night? But then why did Chris Brown get shunned? Maybe he got shunned to silence him too. You feel me? Like they put, like, Buddy beat the brakes off her. She had to shut up. She went in the seclusion. You feel me? As as a, uh, you know, 
that could have been like a you know put hands on her situation, and then when it didn't go the way that he thought it was finna go, oh we gotta put Chris out of here, we gotta show him like nah we gotta put him out of here. I don't know. Like, share, comment, subscribe, man. Sign off in the comments. This has been Smith's The React. Shout out to the subscribers. If you made it this far, go ahead and subscribe. New content daily. Streams every week. You feel me? We're going to start upping the streams. Memberships is there. Go ahead and join the channel. And, um, yeah, man. Once again, salute to everybody. This has been Smith's The Reacts. I'm out, man. Owie.